Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Money in the Law on MyFM 101.3 with your hosts of Money in the Law, Jay Marsden from the Marsden Law Group and John Droan from Main Effort Financial. Two both two both Holliston guys. Um, however, sure. we're 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 all over. We're all over the all over the kind of the greater Milford area. Uh, the My FM 101.3 footprint is the as word far, you're looking as for. As far as the the My FM tentacles will reach, that's where that's our radius. Um, we're here to talk to you about things that uh, are very important. However, they're often not very fun to talk about because oftentimes people other than us think they're boring. No, okay. no. No, no, they do. And that's why we're here, oh, Jay. Right. Yes, they do. That, yes, right. Yeah, they do. That's yes, why we're here. Yes, that's, that's why right. we're... It's our mission? That's why we've been called. We've answered this calling. Oh, it's a calling? To do this, <laughs> to provide this service. And we do this service. I mean, we're doing it out of the goodness of our Many hearts. Many are called, few answer. Yep. That's right. For, for you, our listeners, and for even for the people who don't listen, but may bump into one of our listeners and say... Hey, um, can you help me with this? No, I can't help you, yeah. but I do know two really clever guys who can. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, this, this, in many ways, this harkens back to the discussion that I believe was going on Sunday in church, where the priest <laughs> was commenting on the fact that you had one guy and 12 friends, and then look what it turned into, right? So this is, in many respects, this is exactly the beginning. The this is the beginning. <laughs> this is a movement. I believe it's a movement on that scale. And, you know, obviously, you know, every great journey starts with one step. So we're starting with that. And I'm not saying that it's a religion. I'm not saying that it's a cult. I'm not saying it's going to turn into that. I'm just saying it, 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 it has that feel. That's um, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> sure. It does. It, it, it definitely does. I can definitely understand your... Um, your you see the analogy? Your, your Christ correlation with <laughs> see that. See how it works? Yeah. Yep. I understand. You know, oftentimes when I think about Easter... I think about you, yeah. and I think about you know how you maybe you're that guy. You're the guy. You would have at least twelve friends. That's true. Right? That's right. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's as right. a matter of fact, I have a great story. That's a great lead-in for a story. So <laughs> okay. I love. And so I, I didn't tell you this on purpose because I wanted to tell you the surprise you get. Get your get your true like animation for on the air. Okay. Um, all right. So all Jay right. has not heard the story before. So I am in market basket in Ashland. So nice. of all, of, you know, so yep. I'm usually I'm in the Bellingham market basket, but I'm a big market basket fan. They're not a sponsor. However, I'd be they happy. Could be. They happy could to be. bring them aboard and talk about that. I would have taken that case, um, but go ahead. Yep. So uh, I'm in the market basket in Ashland, and it's on a Saturday, and it's a rainy day, so it's packed. It's sure. packed. And you, you know how market basket can get super big, so it's packed. And, you know, every register is open, and there's about six, five or six people deep. And I'm standing there, I'm by myself, I'm minding my own business, I'm just waiting with my carriage to, to check out. And all of a sudden, the, the guy to the right of me says, hey, um, so uh, I love your show, uh, please give my best to Jay. He does a great job. Whoa, right? whoa, whoa. So whoa. after I get up off the floor, yep. because I, I, I think I lost <laughs> consciousness. your head on the carriage going for many, down. For a number yep. of different reasons. For one, it's like, oh my God, someone's actually seen or heard our show. That's not true. There's millions of people. And I'm like, I turn, I look, and he's like, he introduced himself because he says, my name is John Barry. Right, oh. oh, your friend, yes. former selectman and of uh, of Holliston, right? Yep, yep. yep. The great uh, Jim Barry. You talking about Jim Barry or I'm John sorry, Barry? Jim Barry. Jim Barry. Jim the great Barry. Jim Barry. Jim yes. Barry. Yep. That's right. Jim yep. Barry. Counselor sorry. extraordinaire. Yep. 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 And uh, and he and then he proceeded to introduce himself. He told me about. It. He said you were friends, and I said oh, that's unfortunate. And <laughs> and then I and then I and it, so all it is is just another example of when people I, people. I'm glad that they recognize me. Sure. Uh, yeah. um, I'm but, sure you but, have. But as soon as they recognize, this happened more than once. As soon as they recognize me. Then they're quick to say, "Hey, give Jay my best." I love hey, it. can you say hi to I Jay? Right? Just, that so, made my day. That yeah, made my day. Because just so you know, because nobody ever says that to me, right? Nobody ever says, "Oh, I love your show." And how's John? No, they, they always yeah. say, "I love your show. I think you're awesome." <laughs> and then I say, "Great, that's great." And right. then they always say something like, "Who's that other guy? What's his name again?" Yeah, and I, I like have to explain you to them. And the yeah, other guy. yeah, that's right. That's so right. Here I am. Uh, I love it. Yeah, here I, love I am. It. Let me give you some of my uh, business cards to give out while you're out there. Right. So I'm 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 destined to become this like eternal sidekick, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. You're the you're the you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the Ed McMahon. The you're the Ed Ranger. McMahon to my Johnny Carson. I love it. Fantastic. I, yeah, so of course, I, <laughs> and I and I argue with people too. I'm like, wait, wait. I have I bring something to the table as well. And, it is a team effort, yeah, everybody. It is a team say, effort. They're like, yeah, yeah. Again, please tell Jay I said. Don't forget. Make sure you don't forget. Oh, I, yeah. Don't I get forget. That going on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bye, bye. It's Barry. It's B-A-R. Please make sure. Please make sure. Thank you, so Jim. I, put him I appreciate on the that, Jim. I, I, so I did say I, I, I put him on the T-shirt list. So as soon as the T-shirts are printed, we're, uh, they're on back order right now. Nice. But as soon as the T-shirts are in, 
then uh, I think what we'll we should sure do is just them. drive around with one of those T-shirt guns and just that start randomly launching. Yes. just launching them at people, right? <laughs> right. So if anybody's While walking around, yeah. if you get yeah, so if, you, if you get a T-shirt <laughs> shot at your back, you'll know it's us coming your way. That's right. That's right. Yeah, if you get knocked down with a T-shirt in the back of the head, you know, yep. if you get up and get out of the emergency room, you're welcome. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, oh, we'd also, of course, we're joined by the Hollis and Cable Access TV people, actually person uh, Christian Bidet. Christian, who is, I mean, you're a stalwart, Christian. You're a stalwart. Uh, you, you know, because I see the HCAT people all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, I, work, yeah. I work with them on a regular basis. And um, so they, I, of course, they're, thank you, Bruce, and, and all your people, you know, Don. Yep, great team. Lisa, yep, phenomenal for, team for, over there. We love them. Yep, we love them. But let's just say, who's here every Wednesday? Oh, he's committed yeah, he's, to the cause. Yeah, he's here every time. And, and then, and, or he loses every week rock, paper, scissors. One of the two. One of the two, but he's <laughs> here mean, all the time. Christian, if you're that bad at rocks, paper, scissors, then you're then <laughs> you, you're, you're missing one of your things. Right? You're right. missing like you, you like you didn't bring the, the rock or something. Yeah, like yeah, that's right. You're, the, you're there like, are three like things you know. Tools. That's yeah. right. That's right. There's a couple of them in there. And there is a strategy. You can pick a strategy. Right. Pick a strategy. That's right. right. <laughs> I'm throwing scissors every time. I don't. I don't know why I'm losing. This. Why yeah. am I losing? Yep. That's right. Why? All right. All Christian has is paper. That's right. That's right. It's always so, bringing. Uh, so yeah. So we're. Um, so what's new with you? Uh, another, I'll tell you, another do with me. It's springtime. Uh, it's post, uh, uh, we talked this last week of the show, post uh, m uh, Marathon Monday, and it feels like it's spring in Boston. That's what it, it does. is. The things are, things are popping out of the ground. There's color all over the place. I mean, it's really coming together. You can just see the trees are starting to fill out. I mean, it's, it, it's, 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 it's here. It's here. It's finally here. And, um, you know, so uh, uh, with spring, we, you know, we talked about, remember, like we, uh, I think it was a couple of shows ago, we talked about the kind of your spring cleaning for your finances. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, so if, if you miss those shows, just to remind people that this is the time of year, it's not a bad time to dust some things off, pull things, pull out like some of your, all of your, your paperwork. And if there's paper that you want to get rid of, you can dump it, right? There's, there's, you know, stuff that you have from like years back. And yeah. So, um, but as far as doing it, at least getting out and looking at it and just to remind yourself of what you have. That was... So. Well, there's a couple of shredding days. I mean, look around. There's a lot going on. There's all that spring-themed stuff, right? Earth, so there's some shredding days, Earth, Earth, Earth day, day thing. Yeah. Yep, save the planet type stuff. So, you know, look around. There's opportunities for that. And uh, Or if you really want to go crazy, you know, you sit down while you're watching the Bruins who move on to the next... Uh, next step in the game from a playoff perspective, and That's sit down and boy. do that. Do that way. Do that way. Watch your Bruins game. You, some, got, you got at least four of them to watch. Sometimes I'm. <laughs> sometimes I'm, uh, I'm. I'm. I wonder, like, truly, how you became such a sports aficionado, like right under my nose, like, and I didn't even know. Like, right. secret, so, secret. Yeah, right. We're keeping that. I lots of secrets. That's one he of them. He told me that. He told me like before we started the show. He's telling me, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this, and I'm watching the Bruins game. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. When do you watch hockey? Well, Playoff hockey. Yeah. It's different. It's different. Game it's different. seven. It's different. Playoff That's right. Hockey. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You will not find it? you won't find me bellying up to the TV game two of the season right. and watch the you know, no thanks. I'm good. I'm all set with that. But playoff hockey. I, I do I do I story. do I do like hockey. Playoff hockey is different. Yes, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's Ask anybody. Yeah. It's yeah, different. Yeah. And so, so I've surprised a few folks this week, you're not the only one. Yeah, yeah, you're surprising yeah, that's me. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, no, everything's good. What do you want to talk about today? What's on your mind? Do you have anything on your mind? Uh, no, 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 nothing. No? Right. right. Do you have anything on your mind? I actually have two things on my mind. Oh, two things on go. my mind that we could talk about. So, uh, one of them... Um, Absolutely nothing on we, my mind. We may have discussed this on the show in the past, but one of them is Let's this idea again. of you, you being the executor of somebody's estate and having to sell real estate. All right? And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the timeline. I want to talk a little bit about how that Just works. sell it. Talk a little bit about the appointment process. Well, we could talk about that, but I want to, I want to talk about that because there's a, there's, a, there's a theme that runs through this process over and over and over again. And it's one of my, uh, well, I have like 9 million pet peeves. This is one of them. This is one of them. And so we'll talk, walking a, pet peeve. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm and glad then we'll, I'm not one yeah, of your pet peeves. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the will, some very basic, you know, people always say, Oh, I don't have much. I don't need a will. We're not going to dive super deep into all kinds of crazy estate planning issues. But there's two or three things that having a will, especially as it relates to real estate, that help make the process easier for those who might be tasked with moving your estate along if you're not around. Right? So we're talking about real estates and wills. Yeah. So that's the law. That's the law side. It's the law side. And we're going to talk about that all show. Maybe. We could if you want to. Fine. Which is fine with me. I, I do know it. what I want to talk about now. Oh, oh, do tell. I want to talk about real estate um, <laughs> and uh, how, you know, if you're the executor and how you want to move real estate. And then also how, you know, people think that maybe I don't need a will, maybe I do. 
and how that's a lot of malarkey. Actually, there is one thing I do want to, and I'll save this for after the break. Uh, and I have a question for you. It's a legitimate Ooh, question whoa, right. uh, about Will. And, and it, it's, it, it's such a loaded question. I'm almost embarrassed to ask it I because, it. again, like, seriously, this is like, it's almost like I prepared this show for you today. It's oh almost like God. today, this is like my little springtime. Springtime like, gift. Like it's, it's a gift. It's your Easter like gift little, to me. I'm going to unwrap little, this egg, this Easter egg. Like this little, is your, this is your like chocolate Easter money. Basket. Chocolate money. It's it your chocolate money that's in the egg. What do you put in your eggs, by the way? Money or candy? What? Uh, Oh, candy. Candy. Yeah, Thank there's you. no Thank money you. in the eggs anymore. I'm, I'm not. I'm just suggesting. Although I don't, I do, I don't put money in the. In I do the have egg. a vivid. I, I do have a vivid memory of my grandfather used to do an Easter egg, and this was like around his apartment, like yeah. a room the like the size of this, <laughs> and he yeah. he do an Easter egg, and inside. He, I don't, for some reason, my grandfather always had dimes. Oh, like he had, dimes. I, I think he's like collected dimes, right? Yeah. yeah. And I remember opening up eggs with like eleven dimes, and I'm oh, like, yeah. oh right, you know, it was at dimes. And yeah, then, no, we're candy, we're candy in the. Uh, and I, dimes you know, are good. I talk to somebody like, oh, we have to put money in the eggs, and I think to myself, money? What's that's, 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 I don't know. Money in a, the eggs. I don't know. We're we're candy. We're candy. I usually yeah. end up doing it usually late night too. By the way, and then I gotta hide <laughs> them all, you know. And maybe if it's a Saturday night, because you know it's always on Sunday, I may have been out. I may have been out. May have some socializing going on. And the next morning, the kids are like, Dad, we can only find seventeen out of the 20 are, you know, 37 out of the 40, the right? And they're 4th like, of July. Exactly. Where'd you yeah. put the eggs? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm, fi I'm finding eggs in my pockets. I can yeah. participate in this Easter egg hunt as well. I might come up empty handed. I don't know where they are. So that's All it. Right. All right. We'll talk after the break. Well, well, after the break, we'll talk about some serious stuff and right. where you, where you see if you can find out where you hid your eggs. We'll be right back on Money Law. My FM 101.3, House and Cable Access TV, Jay Marsden, John Drohan. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we're back. Money the Law, MyFM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Maniac for Financial. Both located conveniently right in downtown Halston, right on Route 16. Uh, so we're a five so line from each other. Five so line convenient. from each other. Yeah. Um, before the, uh, actually, coming back from the break, I did want to note our viewing <laughs> audience can absolutely just drink this scene in. But for the listening audience, uh, I, did I, believe, you. I believe you went to a recent... Uh, Musical event yep. uh, in uh, God's Country, Method, right. Massachusetts, at the Chevalier Auditorium. The Chevalier, oh, yep. which yep. I was so so overly impressed with. Yes, that's right. I was psyched about that's, that place. That's old school Method, right there. Oh yep. Yep. man, yep. it was great. Yep. And I and right, and I'm thinking to you. So Medford, for those of you who don't know, Jay is actually from Medford, the greater Medford area, yep. right? Not, yep. So north of Boston, yep. Medford, Charleston. So so so. I'd never, I'd never been to this theater before, and I, I told you, I think I, I don't know if I told the story. So we went to the Indigo Girls concert. I am, I am an out of the closet Indigo Girls junkie, and I have oh, for for years, fantastic. for years, for for t over twenty years, yep. I have, I've been an Indigo Girls fan, and I've never had the chance to see them. This is my first chance yep. to see the girls. They were awesome. They yes, were, they, they are sound, awesome. they yep. sounded just as good as they've sounded. 20 years ago, so I was so psyched to get to go see the girls. Hey, and I got to go, so it was fantastic. Yeah, I, saw, I saw them years ago at the Orpheum. Right, and there, that's there, and yeah. it's. I bet it was the same show. Sure. I bet it was the same show, like 20 years ago, and they sound exactly the same. They, granted, they know they look a little. We all look a little bit older, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, most that's of us. Just yeah. How, yeah. <laughs> most of us. Most of us. Yeah. Present company excluded, Exclu of course. Obviously, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, uh, so but but the show was in Medford, right? And it was in that Chevalier Theater. I, I don't know. I don't think I said this on the air. So never been to that theater before. But when you come up to it, it's not very impressive. You look at it, and it looks like yeah. some. It looks like an old, like New York City middle school. It's like oh, a it's big, the old high school. Yeah, right, there you yeah, go. So it's, it's uh, that's exactly what it looks. Yeah. It looks like an old school, and it's all brick, right? So I'm like, ah, it's going to be one of these things, right? As I walk into that place. As, and and the entire length of the building, as soon as I walk in, is a bar, yeah. like a real bar, like a bar. not like your you know when you go out to Boston and you go to a yeah. show in Boston. Not, it's not got a like Toys R Us. Those makes no 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 no. 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 This yeah. was like like side to side, like at least ten rows of people, ten lines of getting. I don't know how many servers they had back there, like fifteen bartenders, and I'm like, you know what, this place is all right. Yeah. All right. And yeah. I, we Good location. To, we end up having a great time. Great, great show. Time Good to hear. Station. Good yeah. to hear. Good to hear. And don't miss the Indigo Girls. If you get to see them, go see them. Yep. Yeah. Worth it. Yep. Worth, yeah. every, worth every penny. I agree right. with you. So, so uh, let me tee you up. All, all right. right. Go so, ahead. So, well, actually, no, you start. No, no, get with your question. I was always going to start with a question or a quote. We'll start with nah, a question. No, because you know why? Because the question, what's going to happen, I'll ask the question before the end of the show. Right? Because right. it'll, you'll, you, you, you need some time. Man, all, right, so, all right. So, two things. So, two things. Number one, we talked about real estate. We talked about I'm selling right a piece there. of property. All right. This is what happens all the time. And I'm just going to give you the lay of the land from a pitfalls perspective. Okay. 
So when, when you are the executor of an estate and you are fortunate enough to have to wrap up a sale of a piece of property, okay? This is what happens all the time, all right? And again, we may have talked about this, but it's worth repeating, okay? Happens all the time. Somebody passes away, the person's the executor, says I'm the executor because the will says I'm the executor. Now, we haven't even started the probate process, okay? But this is New England, right? And property tends to be expensive. And there's always somebody lurking around who says, you know what, I'd love to buy that house. And I'd love to buy that house from you. And I'm sorry that you're fill in the blank, passed away. Um, by the way, <laughs> Real what, sorry. Are you, what are you doing with the house, right? I mean, in line, at the funeral, yep. hey, I'm so sorry for your loss. What are you doing with the house, right? right. So when that happens, there's a rush, right? There's this rush to, oh my God, we have, a, we have an offer on the table. We have a deal. Somebody's interested in the house. Let's wrap this puppy up. Which is not, which is not an offer. A, a necessarily, I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, in in the circumstances, it's it's it's, it's not, not a great. negative. No, it's not a negative. Not a, no. But because I mean, you know, if you if you t if set aside the you know the reason why there's a there's a house available is it's real estate, that's and right. it, and and this is how you know for those of you who have bought and sold real estate, but that's how it works. Like it's you know the the, the you have to strike while the iron's hot. You well, know? and many times you're striking while the iron's hot because the pl the price might be attractive because you're right away thinking to yourself. Well, if I make them a deal, there's no broker involved. Everybody can do the math, right? 5% of X means I don't have to pay that much. So they're right. already, they already feel like they're in the black, right? So there's this rush to do it. So what we always try to counsel people is to say, look, a couple of things. Number one, first of all, you haven't been appointed the executor yet. The will says you're the executor, but that still has to go through the, the probate process. Say, right? You got to get a piece of paper from a judge that says you are the executor. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because the other part of the, not only do I want to buy this house from you and I'm making you an offer literally in line at the funeral home, but number two is I want to lock this deal down, right? So I want to rush to make you an offer. I want to hand you the offer. I'm hoping you sign the offer. And then I want to close. And I want to close quickly. Yesterday. And it, and it might even be a cash deal. And I want to close. And so here, sign the purchase and sale. And usually somewhere in that part of the process, if we're lucky, we get involved, right? Somebody says, hey, we just signed a purchase and sale. We this meaning thing the is, lawyers who are going to blow this whole party up. <laughs> the lawyers who are circling, <laughs> that's right, circling above. We get involved right? and we say, oh, no, 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 no. My, my old JV basketball coach used to call lawyers deal killers. Yep, yeah. that's right. That's uh, right. We're going to kill this deal right here. We're going to mess this up, right? <laughs> and here's what happens. So you come in the office, you're all excited. You're waving the purchase and sale around. We're ready to go. And guess what? We want to close in a month. Yeah. Fantastic. Have we have we have we probated the estate yet? Have we got you appointed as the executor? No. No. <laughs> no, we haven't. Why is that important? Well, yes, it's important for a you whole just, bunch of reasons. You just signed something that you weren't allowed to sign. <laughs> That's one of them, right? Now, oddly enough, most people who have already put this deal together don't care, right? They have no problem that the person who signed the paperwork has no authority because remember you're not the executor yet. Yeah. The court has not said You're you nobody. are the executor, You're right? Nobody. You're sort of the executor in waiting, right? Yeah. So you so you signed an offer, you signed a purchase and sale, you signed some documentation in your own individual capacity. You weren't wearing your executor hat, you were wearing your you hat, right? Yeah. So you don't have the authority to make this deal yet. But all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna putting that aside for one second, okay? Here, we'll get back here, to that. Here, here, here's the other part. The other part is most folks, for any number of reasons, underestimate the length of time that it might take to get you appointed as the executor. Okay? Now this happens. Why doesn't that happen all the time? Why doesn't right? that happen tomorrow? Now I understand that you have a deal on the table. I understand that you're ready to go and you want to sell this house. I do. I got it, right? I do. I'm sensitive to it. Yeah. Now, guess what? When we go to court, or when we go to the courthouse, there's a lot of other people who are also equally as anxious to get their business wrapped up, mm. right? And they may even be in line before you, right? Mm. And it's kind of like Not going... That matters. It's kind of like going to the deli counter, yeah. okay? Now, here's the difference. When you go in to the probate deli and you pull your number, okay, your number says, it's like a bad movie, right? Yeah. Your number says 1,786, right? And then behind the counter, they call out number... 17. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So you're in line. You want to buy the cold yeah. cuts. You know what cold cuts you want to buy, 
But guess what? No one's going to talk to you. You can go. For a little not while. only can you go do the rest of your shopping <laughs> at that point. That's right. You can go do your Christmas shopping for probably the next one, two to three years. You can go shopping. <laughs> you can check out. You can bring the groceries home. Make dinner. You can put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> you can put them in all the cabinets. You can make dinner with the groceries that you just bought. You can, you can clean up after dinner. <laughs> you can put everything back in the refrigerator, and then you can go back and see where you are in line, okay? <laughs> and the reason that that's important is because here's what happens. My phone starts to ring, mm. okay? And it rings a lot. Mm. And everybody's calling to say, when is this gonna happen? When is this gonna happen? We thought this would take like an hour. Why is it taking so long? And then what happens is, People start making threats, right? The buyer's attorney calls up. We're walking we're away from here. this deal. We're, we, you, we're you, out of here. We, why has this happened yet? Yeah. This, now, I had something happen very recently, a situation like this, where the attorney called up and uh, the broker called up and the attorney was involved and they said, have they been appointed the executor yet? And I said, no, everything's been sent off to the probate court and we're waiting for the appointment to come in the mail. Why do you ask? And this is when the threat started. We're walking from this deal. We're out of here. My, if I don't yep. have an answer tomorrow, my guy's you know leaving. Why? We're leaving. We're taking, we got other things to do. We have taking better our yep. things to spend our money on. We're taking right a now. ball. We're going home, right? So then I said to the guy, let me a quick question for you. I said, when, when is the closing scheduled for? Um, well, it's six weeks Wednesday. from now. Wednesday. Six weeks from now. <laughs> six <laughs> weeks. I said, wait a minute. You're telling me your guy's threatening to leave tomorrow or the next day if we don't have an answer and the closing's not scheduled for six weeks? I said, look, in five weeks, Call me, yeah. okay? We'll have something to talk about in, <laughs> in five, five weeks, weeks. Then you can walk right? away. Then yeah. you can start telling me you're going to walk away, right? <laughs> so again, this idea that you, you know, my advice to everybody is do this in reverse, right? Let's get you appointed first because that could take some time, okay? What's some time? Know, three park. months. Three months. It's three months. Three months. Right, three months. three months. Right, remember, I remember that guy made he made the offer in in the funeral home. Yes, yeah. that's, made, right. So that's right. That's right. Three months. Three before. months. But by the way, three months to be safe. Yeah. Because there might, because the other part of this is, in addition to waiting to get you appointed and assuming that there's no hiccup in the process, part two of this is there may be something related to the property that we have to fix, right? There might be never. a problem with the title. Never. There might be some there's issue. Never any, no, there's never and, any problem with the title, and, and, right? And, and that could slow things down. There's never any down, variance right? things that have to, no, those there's things don't a, exist. There's, there's, and the, and by the way, and the, one of the most frequent things is, in the, in the crazy heyday of, of, of real estate and buying and selling, shockingly, you'd be, you'd, be, uh, you'd be surprised to find out somebody didn't record a mortgage discharge. Never. Right? And that happens. And then when the mortgage discharge has to get chased down, that takes at least 30 days. So, again, <laughs> on the back end of this, right, my advice and guidance to people is let's try to get you appointed first. If you got somebody who's really excited to buy the house, that's fine. Let's explain it to them. Great. You know what? When I get my appointment Tell as the executor. We're the first call we're making. You're the yep. first call. That's right. You're the first, you're the first person in line. We'll take care. We'll, we'll call you. And if you're still interested, that's great. And don't let them tell you, well, the deal's, the deal's only good till tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Well, fine. I mean, unless you're selling a nuclear waste site, this is New England, right? Yeah. This is Boston. Yeah. Property moves. It moves, right? In this environment, it moves. It's not 2008. The sky hasn't fallen. This stuff's going to happen. So if somebody says to you, "Well, it's now or never," well, then it's never. That's fine. Don't, 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 right. don't make yourself. Don't make it what's already a stressful situation. Don't make it more stressful. Right, and that, and that's the that's the real estate drama that comes in these things, right? And for those of you who've like been involved with this, it's like, yeah, oh my God, like you know what? This, you know, it's not going to be here. This deal's not going. It's not going to last. I can't, you know, I can't wait. I can't, and 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 part of it is because. There, there's a reason that those people are in, are in a hurry to kind of move yeah. this along because they understand this. They understand, like Jay said before, that they could be getting a really good deal. They're looking to get a good deal. They're not, they're not trying to buy this thing at, at, for the sticker price. That's right. They're trying to buy this thing. That's right. They're getting this thing at a deep discount cut because they think if they, they, they're going to they're gonna, you know, kind of circumvent this whole the whole real estate listing and all that other stuff, and have the property go on, you know, go on the web or uh, you know, I'll put a sign they're out front. It. They're gonna flip it. They're gonna they, put 50, 75 grand into it and try to make a hundred. And maybe they are, or maybe yeah, they're not, or maybe right. they're maybe they're again, they're, they're just thinking, I'm this is I'm getting I'm buying I'm buying low, right? I'm getting a chance to yep. to buy yep. low, and 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 why wouldn't I do that? And that's fine, but at the same time, you know, th this is. Again, you know, kind of in the as we take a step back and look at like the entire situation, oftentimes 
isn't the house, isn't the, the real estate probably the, the biggest asset that's being that's being settled in the estate? Well, and many times it could be. That's right. And many times it could be the biggest uh, biggest asset in the estate. And I and by the way, I'm sensitive to the idea that carrying property costs money. Yeah. Right. So let's let's not, I'm not dismissive of that. And and hopefully there's some liquidity in the estate that allows for some of these bills to get paid. Um, and here's the other thing, and this comes up all the time when it comes to real estate. If you collectively want to get together, this question comes up all the time. You know, mom, you know, mom was 95 or 100 when we sold the house, and she hadn't lifted a finger to, to clean the joint up in 20 years. It, 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 you know, it's, it's got some mileage. And so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to try to get together, and we're going to, because we watch those shows on TV, we're going to try to, like, throw a coat of paint on the walls and ask for 50 grand more, yeah. right? That, that's a different project. And, and my advice to people is, look, this is what you got, right? You got a piece of property in this condition, right? In the as is condition. If somebody wants to do that, let them buy the house and let them there do that, right? There are some things that you can do, you know, cut the lawn, wash the windows, things like that. I mean, you want to stage it a little bit and try to make some money, obviously. But, you don't want but, to dump a ton of money. But right. That's right. Try to manage how this works. Because the other thing is, there might not be any money, mm. but there might be very little money. And then everybody says, well, let's take the money from the estate. Let's leverage it into the property. And then we're going to make $5 million more than we're yeah, making now, right now. Now, right? now, you're, now you're gambling, right? That's right. Yeah, that's now, right. Now, that's you're, right. now you're, you're, you're betting one thing against the other. And who knows? Right. I'm not saying there aren't some things you can do, but let's try to manage that as best we can. Let's not throw good money after bad in an attempt to squeeze a couple of bucks out of something that, that very well might not happen. Right. All right. We're going to go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Money in the law. We're going to talk more about this real estate, and we're going to talk about that will Ooh, thing. very excited. Yeah, wills and very real estate. All excited. right. And we'll be right back on Money in the Law. My FM 101.3, Hollis and Cable Access TV. We'll be right back. And we're back. Money in the Law, My FM 101.3. Jay Mars and Mars and Law Group. John Drohan, Man for Financial. I'm coffee. Leave me Christian alone. Man in the Con. <laughs> and, uh, yep, I get uh, Coffee Boy over here. That's good stuff. Good stuff. So... Uh, prior to the break, we're talking about real estate. We're talking about making things easy on yourself. Let's get the appointment first. Let's line up the deal afterwards. Otherwise, it's a rush. And, uh, you know, sometimes if there's, a, if, there's a, if there's a problem, that's where the problem is going to become. It's going to fall in place because there's all these deadlines that need to be, to be lined up. And sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do, there's hiccups in the process, there's hiccups in the appointment, there's hiccups at the probate court, and, it, and, and your timeline might get, it's not your normal timeline, mm -hmm. it might get messed up. So we want to make sure that timeline is longer than shorter, and we always recognize, always somebody looking to close that deal well, ASAP. Well, that's the thing, that's you know, you talk about the closing, right? So the last thing you want to do is then show up at the closing and be like, ah. Uh, Oh, uh, you can't do it, right? No, you know, that's right. You know, that's and, right. And the closing goes, and then you waste everybody's time, and then you're back to square one. And there's so. usually some language built into the deal that gives you sort of an automatic 30-day extension. But, you know, sometimes, remember, you get people who are moving. You get people who are coming in. Not everybody, you know, a lot of people are, are going from point A to point B, right? So they're going to have moving trucks lined up. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. And it's stressful, one of the most stressful things you can do. And this is one of those things where somebody says, look, I thought we were closing on Tuesday. What are we waiting for? I have moving trucks coming, or yeah, yeah. even worse, I sold my other place, right? <laughs> oh, we're moving in. I'm homeless come Tuesday right. night. This I'm in my weird. moving truck, and that, this is with all my stuff, because yeah. uh, you said I'd be moving into the house. That's right? right. So this gets weird. So you gotta kind of you got to kind of work this through, make sure that there's some coordination, and make sure there's a couple of, if something happens. Every once in a while, I'll say to somebody, well, look, I know the closing is scheduled for the 10th, but if it goes on the 11th, what, what do you, and now remember, the bank is the one that decides all that because it's up to them. I mean, they know the day we have the closing and the closing attorney is supposed to have that lined up. But a lot of this comes down to the wire. And if something gets a little hinky and the bank says, we can't close whoa, on, whoa, on, whoa. on, that's right, that's right. <laughs> oh, and here's the other thing. Friday closings, Perfect. avoid them like the plague. Oh, avoid yeah. them like the plague. Because you know why? Because everybody says, okay, Tuesday to Wednesday, I can live with it. It's only a couple of hours, one day, not a big deal. For any number of reasons, things that happen over the weekend, it gets weird, right? You can't get in on Friday. You're going to get in on Monday. Everybody checks out early on Friday. Yeah, if it was the around, National Guard, right? wouldn't everybody be off on that's Monday, right? right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Nobody's around. Nobody's, nobody's working, right? Lawyers are all Somebody's leaving early a three on Friday. Day. Yeah. No yep. So that becomes a challenge. So again, these things become a little bit dicey in terms of managing that part of the process. What was your real question? All right. So you would, uh, at the beginning of the show, we're going to talk about how some people say that they, you know, maybe I don't need a will, maybe I don't. Right. So, um... One of the things, and, and I'm, and again, I'm not saying this because I, I work with an attorney or because I'm trying to tee him up, but one of the things that I've, I've always been very wary of is kind of these like, you know, 
online turnkey, you know, sure. like legal Zoom wills, uh, and 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 doing your and leaving your estate plan to that for for a, a whole host of different reasons. But the big reason is, uh, at least in my as as I just. I, you know me, I, I like having like my lawyer. I like having yep. my lawyer there or having somebody who's smarter than me with respect to whatever the expertise is. We talk about, you know, how it's important to have experts, you know, kind of looking over the things sure. that they're expert at. Um, but I, I feel like, in, you know, in those situations, you're setting yourself up for failure in the sense that you haven't had like a trusted person kind of look it over and say, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense because you you you're not you're not an expert in it you you haven't asked yourself the right questions right, right. and even you know even if you get this big long you know kind of questionnaire of you know th these are all the things you need need to take into consideration i i'm i'm still i i'll never advise my clients to do it and as as far as i'm concerned as far as i'm concerned i'll never advise my clients hey just you should do that will online or go get some software and right. figure it out because and you know what i could be totally wrong i could it could be it could work out fine but once, once like the, and this is, you know, once, once there's one wrinkle or there's one thing that, that isn't exactly, you know, isn't as, as kind of streamlined or made up. So I want to get your feedback on what, why, why would I go to an attorney as opposed to if, you know, and oftentimes you see it at like, um, maybe like workplaces, they say, oh, uh, if you know this, we offer this software, you can do, you right. can do your estate plan right here. And it's all part, it's all included in your 401k package, or it's all included in your, in your benefits and your, your job. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've talked about this on the show before. I mean, you know, for, forgetting for one second that it's me, I, I just feel like, and I know that in your industry and your side of the, of the, of the table, this comes up a lot, but you know, when you, when you, when you're going to do it yourself, a, you don't know what you don't know, yep. okay? And there's actually studies that have been shown out there that people who really have no clue what they're doing think that they really do understand what they're doing and their absolute lack of knowledge of how much they're deficient in a particular area actually emboldens them to think that they really know a lot more than they, than they do, right? So, right? so that's part of the challenge. And, and what we find and the way that we, even if clients call us and say, you know, we know what we want, we want a will. Okay, that's because something's driving that. They yeah, heard somebody something, told them, they right? They talked to somebody, that's right. So, so we always start off by saying, well, look, you know, let's talk about the situation, right? Because there's lots of questions that we want to ask that, that are going to lead us down a whole number of different paths about whether or not a will in and of itself is the right thing for somebody to have. Now, we're always going to recommend that they have one. Having one is better than not having one. There you go. But we do advise working with somebody to try to pull that together. I know that there's a ton of software packages out there that promise you all the best benefits of working with an attorney without all the best benefits of working with an attorney. Yeah. And they think that that's great. I mean, we, we tell our clients, look, let's get your estate plan buttoned up. It's going to be a will. It's going to be some other ancillary documents. And then we feel like the value at that point to our clients is you're a client of the firm, right? Uh. So if you have a question tomorrow, just pick up the phone and call us. Okay? I got a lawyer. Well, and, that's right. You have a lawyer. I have a lawyer. That's exactly right. I have my lawyer. And by the way, guess what? Your lawyer can help you in all kinds of legal areas that are that's, unrelated that's why they're lawyers. to the will. Right? That's why they go to the law and, school. And the, and the good ones say, look, that's not my area, but I got a guy. Yep. Or I got a person. Or I got, a, I got somebody that I can get you to that can answer these questions. And I used to always joke about, you know, was the, 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 for the, from a tax perspective, there was always a, there was a series of those commercials where the person was like, ask the box, right? Yeah. Ask the box that question. Ask the box that yeah. question. Yes, there are some simple scenarios where maybe something stripped down works. But more often than not, that's not the case, right? You're going to have questions about probate. You're going to have questions about long-term care. You're going to have questions about your health and how your health impacts your estate planning and whether your estate planning should fit in with a particular scenario. I can't tell you how many times people wander in the door and say, I did this estate plan not that long ago, and this is what was recommended, and what do you think? And we start asking a bunch of questions that never got asked, and then their plan ends up being what we draft for them. is completely different than what they had, again, not that long ago, because the situation is different. Well, remember, what, what is the estate plan, what is it designed to do? The estate plan is, de it's not when someone says, well, I, hey, lawyer, uh, I need, we need a will. It's not. That's not what they're saying. There's. That's not what they. That's not what they really mean. They. They say it. They. I say. Oh yeah. I need a will. No. I, I'm not saying that. What. I'm, what that translates to is, I want 
these events to happen. Yeah. I want I want this to happen to all of my hard work, hard earned property, or I want this this care to be provided for my for my minor children. I want this. I want to, I want to see. I want to paint this picture after I'm gone, and I have and I can't hold the paintbrush anymore. I can't I can't do any. I, I can't affect this anymore because I'm dead. Well, and we try to tell people, look, you know, let's let's pull it away from this transaction, right? Because it's not a transaction. We tell people this is these are these are are these are concepts. These are lifestyle decisions. These are questions, right? The, you know, the and and you know, you have young kids. I have young kids, and you think to yourself, if I'm not around, right? What do what do I want my kids' life? To be like, that's right, right. That's yeah. that's what do I not, want to see. Right? And, and we haven't even talked about your will. It's not even about yeah. the will, right? The question is, if your husband and your wife, you know, if mom and dad pass away, how do you? I mean, putting aside the emotional trauma of losing your kids, your parents at some early age, the question then becomes, well, what do you want that? What do you want that transition to be like? What do you want that whole process to look like? And do you want it to be smooth and articulate and and well established that if you weren't around, this is what's going to happen? Or right. do you, do you want, to want it to be an interfamily rock fight, right? Which could be, which could leave, which could leave even more marks because of the of the of the challenges right. of managing this whole process, right? The will, it's it. The will is, the the will is a, is a is a tool. But the question really is, what do you want the big picture to look exactly. like? Exactly. Right. How do you want it to work? Because that's because because the money, right? The yeah. money is is a part of it. The yep. money is a, it's a it's a part of it. But it's a, it's it's a it's not it's certainly not. 50% of it. It's not, no. it's not, it couldn't even be 75 because that's what it is. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, just like my old man, you said, and you heard it from your financial planner. It's only money. That's right. It's, it's only money. So, so if, if you're in a situation where, you know, if, as a, as a young, as young parents, you're, you're setting up your estate plan and your biggest concern. And I, and I tell people, like people come to me, oh, we definitely need a will. You know, we need a will, we need a will. I'm like, Okay, why do you need a will? Oh, well, we need a will, you know, so our kids and blah, blah, blah. I go, stop. I go, your, your biggest thing is the reason that you need a will more than anything else is to, you could say, who's going to take care of my kids? Like, that's what, oh, that, yeah. like, who's going to be the guardian of my children? Money, assets, everything else aside, that's your first and foremost concern because if I die, then my wife takes care of my kids. If my wife dies, then I take care of my kids. If we're divorced and I die, my wife gets the kids. Right. If and and vice versa, right? So so that's that that's if, if only one person dies, then it, it it's pretty you know it's pretty cut and dry. Well, but what if what if nobody dies? What if there's a what if there's a long term care situation or not even a long term care situation? As in you were older, what if something happens to somebody? What right. if somebody you know somebody has a stroke, somebody falls off a roof, somebody you know somebody deals with something that doesn't involve passing away. Mm -hmm. for First of all, that's the challenge. But the other part of it is, and you know, having having worked in both sides, right? Having worked on the money side and the law side, you know, it's 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 the person that you work with, the attorney that you work with. There's an ability because clients call up all the time and they don't understand, they don't understand the mechanics, right? That's right? They don't understand what happens behind the curtain, right? This is and this is the idea when somebody says, well, what happens if something happens to me, right? They're not even talking. Forget the will, right? They want to know. They want to know like. Walk me through the walk me through the movie that is what happens from here, right? And what? so, and we'll explain to somebody. Well, who's your executor? It's my kid. Okay. Well, your kid's going to go get a, forget the details. Your kid's going to go get appointed at the probate court if if they have to do that, and then they're going to get the authority to go do stuff, right? And that do stuff means collecting all your 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 assets, all your stuff, all your converting those basically, unfortunately, to cash. Yep. Okay. I know you think it's worth a lot. Saturday morning. Out on the lawn, gone. We'll right? see. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That gets converted to cash, and then that cash has to go somewhere. And so, the, the it's not it, it's not the will. I think parents are people who have a plan like this. They want to understand whether they remember it the minute they walk out of the office or not. People want to understand that there's something happening. They yep. want to know what those actions look like. They don't, that there's they, a plan. That's right? right. That's right. And they're not caught up in the details. Yeah. They don't want to bank of, you know, TD Bank or Middlesex Bank. They don't care about that stuff, right? But they want to know what happens when I'm not around. Right. You know, you're, John says, hey, we're, we're going to Cape this weekend, right? Now, yeah. everybody knows what that means. That means there's some packing to do, right? There's some ice to be purchased. There's a cooler to be filled. We're leaving right? three hours later than we said we were going to. Yeah. <laughs> but, but everybody knows That's what the works. journey looks yeah. like, right? And when you're putting your estate plan together and you're pulling your will together, it's the same story. If you're not around, 
there's a plan. There's something that's going to have to happen. And guess what? Sitting down and typing that in, yeah, that's, you're not going to get that answer. You're, you're not, not going to get that answer. Or you're not going to get, you're going you're to have, or you're going to have a picture in your mind. That may not be how it works. Because, nope. because unless you've done it before, unless you've, you've been the executor of which most people have not, unless you've been the executor, unless you've, unless you've processed an estate before, you don't know. You don't know how you don't know how and 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 you're you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to like oh I'm 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 sure that this software is going to tell me that you know and I'm not, I'm not saying that it's it's got no value it, I mean yeah it's 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 cool it, and 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 maybe there's something that you could you could learn from it but Look, it, it's potentially better than nothing okay it, it's it's now, potentially a lot better than now, nothing Now when right? I say potentially here's what I mean we see this all the time where people wander in, right? And they say, oh yeah, we're all set. We get the estate put a button up. We did one of those online things. And then they pull out the paperwork and what happens? It's not signed, right? Yeah. It's not signed. <laughs> so they, have, they have it. It's all set. They're gonna get around to signing it. But remember, to get it done, you have to sign it. It has to be written. It has to be witnessed by two people. It's gotta be notarized. That, in some respects, that could be our biggest challenge. It's just logistically lining just that stuff it, up. Making right? it authentic, yeah. Now, here's the thing before the, before the uh, when we talked about real estate, there's the other piece of the will part that, that, I, that I highlight for everybody. Have, you know, people say, I don't need a will. Everybody knows what's gonna happen. Okay, but the person who has to do the job, here's what happens on the back end, right? If you don't have a will and there's real estate involved, we have to go to court and get a license to sell. The court has to approve the sale of real estate. What number am I in on the deli counter for I mean, that? You're, 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 I mean, that's a, first of all, it's just a hassle. It's yeah. a headache. And, and fortunately or unfortunately, the lawyer's going to say, oh, no will, real estate, license to sell. That's also, that's a la carte, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's turkey and roast beef. Guess what? That's extra, right? Yeah. So we can avoid that because if you have a properly drafted will, inside your will will be language that says my executor has the ability to sell real estate. And we don't have to do anything more than reference your probate file in the deed transferring the property. It's much easier to do it that way. The second thing is, if you don't have a will, you technically are potentially have to chase down all the assents from everybody who's involved in the estate. They have to agree to, that you want to be that 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 you should be named the executor. They have to also agree to not say I want the job, which that can be fun, right? Yeah. That's really fun, right? Let's have the siblings battle this out over who's gonna you know who's gonna carry out. Mom I got and time dad's, for that. I got time for that. Mom and dad's will free wishes, yeah, right? So we'll do that. Awesome. Let's put yeah. some let's put some dysfunction on the table. That can be a problem. And then the other the, uh, the other thing is if you if you have a will, most people in their will the language goes something like and my executor gets to serve with no sureties on a bond. And what that means is they don't need insurance to, pr to prove or to keep you from stealing the money. Now, if you don't have a will, you Guess don't have that getting. language, and depending on the size of the estate, the court may say, you gotta go get a bond, or you gotta put up some collateral, and it's basically you putting up some money, whether it's yours or you pay for it, to say, look, I'm not gonna steal the money. Now again, in and of himself, those three things individually, not a huge deal, but those are three things that add to the laborious process of why people say, I want to avoid probate, I want to avoid probate. Because remember, we've talked about it on the show before, all your will does is tell the probate court what's supposed to happen to your stuff. If you have a will, you're going to probate because that's, that's where the explanation happens. Right. And at least having that, and if it has those key components. Now, every once in a while, we do find wills that were written 100 years ago that don't have some of that language in there. And you say to yourself, Boy, that's kind of weird that that language would be in there. And this is going to make things that's a little... That's old school. That's like <laughs> John Wayne wrote that will. Right? It's going to yeah. make things a little bit more difficult for us, <laughs> but that's fine. We'll muscle through it. But again, this is why you go back to the idea of... That's the one on the parchment paper, right? Oh, that's we've the one had, that was yeah. written with a quill. Yeah. Well, I think we talked about this. I had yeah. somebody come in the other day with a 50-year-old will, unsigned. We have wills right here. They pull the paper out. It's like pulling out human skin, right? <laughs> out of the out of the container, out of the, the folders, right? They lay it on the table. I'm getting the white gloves on, like a, like I'm reading the Gettysburg Address, you know. And and all of a sudden, I'm waiting for Nicholas Cage to yeah. come crashing through the window That's and right. steal the parchment, it's right? National treasure. And and all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, he's not even signed. And they both kind of look at me like, what? What do you mean they're not signed? They said. He never signed these. He had 50 years to sign these. They never get signed. Yeah, we were oh, going to do we, it. Yeah. We didn't get around it. We're kind of busy. Yeah, yeah a lot the going pen on. ran out of ink. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. The, uh, we ran out of pens. The, uh, the, the birds all flew away. <laughs> no pens. So The birds that live in our house. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so again, the real estate piece, you know, 
uh, you know, do it, do, do the order that we've suggested. Treat, get yourself appointed first, then you can start fielding offers. You know, to John's point, you know, no one's running away. You're, you're not going to own it forever. You're not going to get stuck with it, right? There's, you know, unless there's some issues that we don't know about with the property, but you right. know, but give yourself, unless, right, give yourself unless you're plenty. trying to unload that thing, right? Because there's right. some give yourself plenty of medical time. waste in the septic. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's you bring up a good point. Here's the other thing: you want to sell that piece of property yeah. in your fiduciary capacity, so that personally, something down the road happens, and you there can't you, you can't say to yourself, "Well, look, there I, I got to go. protect myself here. Let's let's figure out what the rules are lined up and That's make sure right, I'm you don't know here. if you didn't live there, it's not your house." You don't you know. know, you know yeah. No idea what's buried. You don't in the know where the bodies are buried. That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> and then on the will side, you know, again, we've advocated before. I, uh, you know, again, not 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 from not for selfish reasons, but at for some somewhat selfish. At some point in time, slightly selfish. No, bring bring in it's bring fiduciary. In, bring in the real advisors. Let them give you the advice and guidance. Don't talk to the box because you're going to have other questions. And if you have a really good relationship with your financial advisor and a really good relationship with your lawyer and you pick up the phone and you call and you ask questions, they will answer your now question. You they will tell you that you've got nothing to worry about and you can move forward safe in the knowledge that you checked in on a couple of things because, and they've explained it to you. Yeah, because really at the end of the day, the whole reason you're doing this is so you can get a good night's sleep. Yes. Because really, <clears throat> technically, when your will, when your estate plan gets executed, you're not going to be around. No, yeah, no, you're no. you're not going to be part of that 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 process. You're not going to be part of you that. You can't plan. answer any questions. No, you can't answer any questions. You can't complain. You can't like say you know you're welcome to somebody. That's like right. you're you're not there. So so you're you're doing this. So when 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 that happens, when the inevitable happens, and you're at the point where you're not there anymore, you up until that point, you get a good night's sleep. And yes, that's what you you're do. doing. That's exactly that's peace of mind. So, peace of so, mind. So if your peace of mind is best because you saved, I don't know, a thousand dollars because you didn't use a estate plan because you bought some software online, then great, have at it. Then that's your peace of mind. If you're my client, I'm going to tell you you're insane. But because then, then I don't have peace of mind. Then as as you're as as working with you, I don't have peace of mind and thinking that. And when you say, oh, everything's going to like go, you know, this is how I want this to pass sure. along. Okay, we'll see. That's the, right. well, it's the ultimate act of love. The ultimate act of love. Do it the right way. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it. We're out of time. That's it. We're that's out of time. It. You know, so, I, so with my ultimate act of love, I gave, gave you this you Easter it over basket. The law today. I got it. Right. I got it. That's I got right. it. All right. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll be back next week on Money in the Law on MyFM 101.3, your hometown local news station and Hollis and Cable Access, Access TV, the best TV station in all of Hollis. Wow. All right. Go Bruins. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah.